Hello, my name is Amir. I'm pleased to say that I'm a dental surgeon and I'm here to talk to you, a budding dentist, a general dental practitioner perhaps, a dental therapist, or anyone for that matter, about a disease that affects not so much the inside of the mouth, but that of the jaws, and that is called tetanus. This is a bacterial disease caused by the Clostridium tetani, which you all know is found in soil and animal feces, particularly that of horses, and therefore is ubiquitous. And if patients injure themselves, our patients injure themselves and contaminate that injury with soil, they stand the chance of developing tetanus. Tetanus produces spores. Spores can lie in the depth of wounds under anaerobic conditions for a long period of time. And although it's a bacterial infection, therefore, it has a long incubation period, one to three weeks. And the importance of tetanus is that tetanus bacillus produces a neurotoxin and that neurotoxin affects the anterior spinal nerve roots and may produce a variety of symptoms, some of which may come your way, our way. And the most important one is trismus, so that patients present complaining that they cannot open their jaw because of the spasm of muscles around it. And the spasm of muscles may be such that the angles of the jaws are pulled aside so that the patient appears to be smiling. That is called the rhesus sardinicus or the smile sardinicus. Nothing to smile about at the early signs of tetanus. And that neurotoxin may then affect the pharyngeal muscles so that patients have difficulty in swallowing dysphagia. That neurotoxin may then cause contraction of muscles, so that it causes a violent contraction of muscles, so that patients lift themselves off the bed, arch the back because of it, and that is extremely painful. And the final phase of that neurotoxin's activity is that the muscles of breathing become paralyzed. The intercostal muscles and the diaphragm, and patients often die of anoxia, and respite to failure if that is not treated very quickly. So what comes across as a simple complaint, which I'm afraid is sometimes passed off by us as hysteria to severe anoxia and death in a relatively quick and a short period of time. And you should be aware of this diagnosis clinically. It's a clinical diagnosis and you should be aware of patients which present complaining that they cannot open the jaw, particularly if it's of a recent onset. And particularly so if they've had a recent injury and contaminated that injury with soil. It is treated very energetically with penicillin, intravenous penicillin, careful nursing in a darkened room because stimuli will bring about these muscle contractions in the impairment of breathing and we give them human tetanus immunoglobulin and sometimes sedate these patients until they get better. Sometimes, if they're really bad, you have to paralyze them, incubate them, respire them until the phase is passed over. So beware of patients which complain, I cannot open my jaw and end up in your dental chair.